Well, welcome to part four in the Craig Precision Router Table series of uh, videos. And today we're gonna to be putting this fence onto the router table. Now, if you haven't seen any of the other videos in this series, well, you can just click this link right here and go ahead and watch all those other videos. Or if you've made it this far and watched them all, you know the drill. Watch this while I get this out of the box. Okay, I am back and there's a lot, a lot of pieces to this fence. Luckily, they're all really nicely organized in little packets that um, match up with which section of the fence you're putting together. Now, as I will say in all these videos, the first thing to do is you really should take a look at this part thing and go through and make sure you have everything before you start putting it together because there's nothing worse than being missing a part and not sure if you dropped it on the floor, if you left it someplace else, or if you never had it in the first place. So I went ahead and did that and I do have everything I need, but I ran into one problem. And that is on the actual fence extrusion itself. There is this tiny, tiny, tiny little ding on it. And I would normally say it's just cosmetic and no big deal, even though I'm crazy and don't like any kind of marks on my tools whatsoever. But in this case, it does cause a problem, and that is the measuring tape that comes up here and is used for setting up the fence and measuring the different pieces when they go through will not lay flat because of this thing. So I had to go and contact Craig Technical Support, and I've done that once before on this build and they were fantastic. They answered the phone right away. So this time I decided to use their chat feature to see how that went. And while I'm pretty sure I got the exact same customer service guy, which was great because he was fantastic the first time, they were able to resolve it very quickly and are shipping out another one of these to me. So while I can't put this together right now, there's lots of other things we can do while I'm waiting for a replacement fence. So let's just set this aside and see what we do first. Now, the first step in this is to attach this clamp block assembly. So this is the clamp and this is the actual block that will mount to the table. Now, I am not gonna show how to do this because I don't have any other router tables, but I will mention it. And that is that this fence can work with other router tables. And there are instructions inside the Craig manual on how to attach it, but it does require cutting, measuring, making sure the thickness is correct, and even making sure you make one of these keyhole slits. So not necessarily the easiest process, but it is nice that this fence can be used with any other table you're, you know, might like to use or feel confident using. So let's go ahead and screw this onto the side of the table where it belongs over here. And we do that with this packet of screws right here. And it even comes with the bit to do it. All right, so this is on nice and sturdy. There are eight screws that hold it in place, so I don't expect this to go anywhere. Um, it wasn't too bad to put on. Um, once I got two screws started to hold it in place, it was pretty simple. So the next thing we need to do is put the actual block adjustment on, and this is just gonna slide over. And then we're gonna adjust these little nylon screws on the side so that they just touch the metal. And this will allow it to glide back and forth, but not wobble at all. Adjusting those nylon nuts only really keeps it from wobbling side to side in the uh, horizontal um, plane. It does not actually prevent you from picking the plate up and off the uh, piece completely. So once you unlock it, you can remove the fence bracket all the way up and then put it back in to lock it in place. So those nylon washers, they're really just to 
make this operate smoothly, but they're not there to actually hold the lock block in place. The next step is to slide this eight inch ruler into the block. Now, this wasn't really tricky to do, but it was a little tricky to figure out exactly where it goes into. It does not go into this lock piece right here. It actually slides right into the bracket itself and it's just held in place by friction. So when you put it in, you want the lower end of the scale to be towards the front of the table, which is over here. So if you look at it, it's gonna go two, one, zero, and then up to six again. You can see that once you add the lock back on top, it slides back and forth and it has a little sight glass that goes over the ruler to tell you where you are in relationship to the ruler. Now this would be the part where we'd go ahead and attach the fence extrusion to this block, but I don't have it yet since uh, I needed to have one sent to me as a replacement for the defective one. So we'll go ahead and we will wait for that, but luckily you will not have to wait too long because fences multiply like rabbits. I'm just kidding. Um, it's YouTube. I just stopped recording while I was waiting for these to come. Now, uh, this probably needs a little explanation and that is I actually had to ask for a replacement part twice. So uh, I'm not quite sure what happened and I did finally get to a usable fence, but let me explain. So the first one had damage up here where this tape would lay. So the tape could not lay flat and therefore would be a little bit off. So I called Craig, their tech support was excellent and they sent me out a whole new fence. Unfortunately, the second fence had more damage across the top and was even a little bit worse. It was on the opposite side and the same thing happened. The tape can't lay flat on that. Now, this third fence um, arrived in good condition. Uh, I'll be able to lay the tape down. But even this one had a little cosmetic damage. So I don't really know what the story is or why maybe this batch was banged up a bit. But Craig did a good job with sending me out new ones. I'm not gonna complain about a little cosmetic damage on the last one, especially since they sent me two new fences, no questions asked. But if anyone else has experienced damage on these fences, uh, put the comment below and um, I'm curious to see if anyone else had anything similar to this. So with a fence that's usable and working, um, let's go ahead and install it to this table and move this video along. To start attaching the fence, we're gonna need um, this package of screws. And I kind of like how Craig sets up their screw packages so that they are all kind of self-contained for each assembly part. It makes it a lot easier than digging through a whole bag of hardware. So for this, we're just gonna take the fence, put it near these holes over here. So the first thing we're gonna put in place are the spacers, which just lay right on top of the holes. And then these bolts just go through the washers, through the extrusion, through the spacer, and into the block. And we just tighten those down hand tight for now, and then we'll move on to the next step. Next up is the fence lock handle, and that's in hardware pack three. This just installs pretty easily by sliding this machine screw through and just putting the spacers and the brackets in the side like this. Once you got the lock nut holding the lever in place, you can adjust it. So you want to turn it 45 degrees to the left as I'm facing the back of the um, fence, and that's going to be in the lock position. Once it's there, you can go ahead and tighten it down with the screwdriver till it's tight, and then that will make it so that it can lock the fence down. And then when you turn it to the right, that will release it. The final step in this part is to put these little white nylon set screws right next to where the um, lock handle goes. Now, later on, we're gonna have to square up this fence and this is used to do that, but for now, we just need to stick them in place loosely so they don't get lost. The next thing to install is the dust port and that just snaps into place by lining the back up and pushing these tabs down. The next part's a little tricky, but hopefully this helps you out. So. We gotta go ahead and we gotta install this measuring tape. And the way the directions tell you to do it is to measure the top of the extrusion for the fence, divide it by two, and then mark the center point, and then make that zero on the tape. You can do it another way, and I find this a little bit easier. So first thing you wanna do is make sure the tape measure is facing the right way so that you can read it from 
the front of the router. The second thing you'll notice is that if you put the tape down, and since this is exactly 36 inches, on both sides, you should be able to read 18 right at the edges. So if we line this up, you'll see that's true. So in this case, we have 18 and we have 18. Now these tapes are used, I guess, on other Craig products and other tracks, so it's longer than what we need. So in this case, we're gonna have to trim the excess off. So I think the easiest way to put this down is to start on one side, peel back the tape and rip it off just past where the 18 mark is. Then line the 18 up with the edge of the fence extrusion and stick it down. Now, if everything works out right, we should have 18 on the other side as well, which we do. So we can go ahead and pull off the rest of the tape and stick this down. Now we just need to trim the excess off and the easiest way to do that is with a pair of flush cut snips. Next up is these fence faces that go here and here. And these just install with hardware pack four, which is some screws, washers, and little twist nuts that go on the back because these can be removed and replaced or even slid back and forth depending on what you're doing with the router table. Now let's install the bit guard and this just goes on some T-Track screws and we'll slot across on here. And hardware pack six is what has these parts in it. And this consists of the bolts, the little adjustable nuts and the spacers. This Craig routing table actually has a really cool feature and that is that it can also do some jointing. So it comes with these two rods for that process and there's a nice place to store these so they don't get lost inside the fence. And they just slide right into the side right here. And one just goes on each side. Now remember those nylon nuts that are over by the quarter turn release for the fence? That's to adjust the square of the fence and the way the Craig instructions state is that aluminum extrusions like this have the ability to twist a little bit. So those two screws are for adjusting this kind of twist. So the way to do that is to take any kind of square you might have and put it up against this side of the fence, which is should be square, and then put it up against the other side of the fence and then adjust those two nylon screws until this side of the fence is square with your square. In my case, I didn't need to make any adjustments, so I just tightened the nylon screws down until they touched the table and just kept it secure. I guess it's possible over time that this could come out of square, so it's nice to have that adjustment, and I will keep checking this over time. The second part to square the fence is to square the fence to the actual table. And to do that, it is pretty easy. We just need a large square like this or even a ruler will work and what we're going to do is we're going to put this down we're going to leave the block side of the fence locked down um, remember those screws over here we left loose and we're going to undo the quarter turn lock on this side of the router fence now because these screws are loose we have a little give in the fence we'll go ahead and we will measure this side and then we will compare it to this side over here to make sure they're the same. And once we get everything lined up and accurate, we'll go ahead and we will tighten down these bolts. So now that everything's squared away, we can go to the final step of installing this fence. And luckily it's a pretty easy one. And all we have to do is install this micro adjuster. Now this micro adjuster is a nice piece for the router table. It allows to make fine movements of the fence, 
but most of the time you're not really going to be using it so it just stores out of the way towards the front of the fence rail over here. So the way this installs is there is a T-screw and that goes into the side of the fence and that's followed up by the micro adjustment plate. This little spacer washer, a metal washer, and then the lock nut. Well, that is it for installing this precision router fence by Craig onto the router table. Um, I hope you got something out of this video and you liked it. And if you did, please make sure to give us a thumbs up below. And also, you know, if you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment. I always try to answer those as fast as possible. And make sure you uh, sign up and subscribe to our channel so you get notifications for new videos like this and for part five in this series when it comes out where we'll be doing a couple of uh, nice upgrades to this table, including um, adding some dust collection um, enhancements, uh, talk a little bit about featherboards, and also about a nice little safety feature. So until next time, um, good luck with your router table and I will see you again in our next video.